Welcome to Easton's Hugh Moore Park, home of the Josiah White II Canal Boat, the National Canal Museum, and the heart of the Delaware and Lehigh National Heritage Corridor, a region rich in the history of coal mining, canals, railroads, and industry. The story of Hugh Moore Park and the DNL Corridor begins with anthracite coal, a carbon-rich, shiny black rock discovered in the mountains of Carbon and Schuylkill counties in the late 18th century. As a fuel, anthracite is superior to the wood and charcoal that early Americans used to heat homes, cook food, and smelt iron because it burns hotter and longer. But it was extremely difficult to move coal from the mountains of northeastern Pennsylvania to markets in the Philadelphia area in the early 1800s. The only transportation routes were shallow, rocky, and often dangerous rivers. Another problem was with the anthracite itself. It is hard to ignite. But Philadelphia business partners, Josiah White and Erskine Hazard, solved the problem at their wireworks along the Schuylkill River in 1812, when they accidentally discovered that anthracite furnaces needed to be fed air from underneath in order to burn. With that problem solved, White and Hazard turned their attention to mining anthracite and delivering it to customers in and beyond eastern Pennsylvania. In 1818, the two businessmen leased the properties of the bankrupt Lehigh Coal Mine Company in Summit Hill, a tiny hamlet nine miles west of the Lehigh River. To move their coal to Philadelphia, they proposed to make the hazardous Lehigh River navigable. The Pennsylvania legislature considered White and Hazard's plan a folly, doomed to failure, and leased the river to them for one cob of corn a year. By 1819, White developed an ingenious transportation system that proved their doubters wrong. While Hazard rounded up investors in their new company, White tamed the Lehigh by building a series of 12 bear trap dams between Mock Chunk, a new river port east of Summit Hill, and Easton, where the Lehigh entered the broad Delaware River. Each bear trap dam was designed with a sluice gate in the middle that could be opened or closed. When the gate was raised, water backed up behind the dam and formed a large pool where flat bottom boats called arcs, which carried the coal, could line up in groups. When the gate was lowered, the river water rushed through like an artificial flood and carried the arcs with it. After all 12 dams were passed, the arcs entered the Delaware River and navigated to Philadelphia. It was a success. By 1825, White and Hazard's Lehigh Navigation Company was sending more than 28,000 tons of anthracite a year to market. But there was one nagging problem. The arcs could only go downstream, not back up. As a result, new boats were being built at a rate that lowered profits and depleted forests around Mock Chunk. White and Hazard knew that a two-way navigation system like New York's successful Erie Canal could solve the problem. In 1826, they hired Erie Canal engineer Canvas White to oversee construction of a canal that followed the Lehigh River from Mock Chunk to Easton. Beginning in 1827, more than 1,000 Irish immigrant workers and Pennsylvania German farmers dug 36 miles of canal ditch, built eight dams across the Lehigh River to divert water into the canal, constructed 47 lift locks, 47 stone houses for lock tenders' families, and other structures necessary for the canal's operation. By 1829, the canal was in full operation. At the same time, White and Hazard built a nine-mile gravity railroad to carry anthracite from Summit Hill to Mock Chunk. And then they opened America's first industrial park along the Lehigh Navigation at Abbott Street in Easton, using the canal for water power. Despite all this success, the two men still faced a major problem getting coal to Philadelphia. The problem was the state-engineered Delaware Canal, which was to link Easton and Bristol, a Delaware river port 60 miles to the south in Lower Bucks County. The canal was poorly designed, leaked badly, and had locks that were too small to handle White and Hazard's boats. Without a canal connection at Easton, White and Hazard were forced to transfer their coal from canal boats to large arcs and float them down the Delaware River. It was a costly and inefficient way of getting coal to market. After an unsuccessful opening in 1832, Pennsylvania hired White to re-engineer the Delaware Canal. By 1834, the canal was up and running. The Lehigh Coal and Navigation Company could finally load coal on boats in Mock Chunk and carry it directly to the Philadelphia market. 
In short order, tens of thousands of tons of anthracite were being shipped down the canal. There was one more hurdle for the men to overcome, and that was to change the way iron was being made in the United States. Furnaces were still burning charcoal to make iron, a slow and inefficient process. White and Hazard were determined to see anthracite become the preferred fuel. In 1838, Hazard traveled to Wales to persuade David Thomas, an iron master who had perfected the use of anthracite in hot blast iron furnaces, to come to Pennsylvania to build an iron furnace using White and Hazard's coal. In August 1839, Thomas began constructing the Lehigh Crane Company's first iron furnace on the banks of the Lehigh Canal in present-day Catasauqua. The effort was a success. Thomas's furnace went into blast on July 4, 1840. The first cast produced as much iron as most charcoal furnaces made in a week. The revolution that changed American industry was underway. Local iron ore supplied the Crane Company furnaces and others that opened along the Lehigh River in Allentown, Bethlehem, and here in Glendon, on the very same ground Hugh Moore Park occupies today. By 1850, anthracite-fueled furnaces produced half of America's iron. A quarter of it was made in Lehigh and Northampton counties and carried to foundries and blacksmiths aboard White and Hazard's boats on the Lehigh and Delaware Canal. Iron's ability to be reshaped into railroad rails, bridge parts, armaments for war, and structural materials for buildings produced an industrial boom that catapulted America into position as a world economic power. White and Hazard's ingenuity ignited an industrial revolution. The Lehigh and Delaware canals, so key to that revolution, closed in 1932. But their legacy still lives along the DNL Trail where mules once pulled narrow boats laden with anthracite, pig iron, lumber, slate, grains, fruits and vegetables, and other cargo necessary for survival and growth in the region. Pause and take a look around as you leave this building. Outside the doors are 200 years of transportation history set closely together. The Lehigh Canal, a railroad, a road for auto traffic, and up the hill, an interstate highway. Our nation is constantly on the move and constantly moving forward. When you board the Josiah White II canal boat, you can experience a bit of what it was like to travel on the canal that started it all.